Hi everyone, welcome back. So we are going to start our projects today with this window planter or this long planter. It's actually not a window planter. And we are going to cut it in half. Now I thought this would cut easily like uh, regular plastic, but it started to chip and little pieces started to fly everywhere. So please make sure that you wear protective eyewear during this part and just try to get it as evenly as possible to even sides. It's not going to cut the way I wanted it to, but um, it still works out in the end. So now that it's cut in half, I just want to sand down any sharp edges. So if you see me tracing my finger around, I'm not pointing at anything. I'm just trying to find where the sharp places are and using a sanding block from Dollar Tree, I'm going to sand it down until it's dull. And now that that's done, I'm going to take this white chalk paint from Folk Art and give this a priming coat. So once that is done, I am going to let it dry and then using Antique White from Ceram Coat, I am going to use a makeup sponge and do one coat of the Antique White all over the planter. And then using a Q-tip, I'm going to use the Ram Coats Burnt Umber to give this a distressed look because I am going to make this into a window box planter. I want it to look like it's been outside, it's been in the elements, it's weathered, it's not, you know, brand new. So I'm going to go around the edges and then I'm also going to make some marks across the front and on the sides to give it a weathered look. If this is your first time here, welcome. I would love to have you join my family and subscribe so you don't miss any of my DIYs. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you will be notified when I do upload a new video for my returning subscribers. Thank you so much for your continued support. I appreciate it so much and welcome back. I'm going to set that aside to dry and in the meantime I'm going to work on my farmhouse window. So I got four of these pictures from Dollar Tree and the reason why I got these particular pictures is because most of the work is already done. You don't have to paint the frame, it's already painted, it's already distressed a little bit. So all I'm going to do is to take the wrapping off, I'm going to push the plastic picture out and I'm also going to take the wire hanger off and also the actual um, hangers. I use one of those little mini screwdrivers to take those hangers off as well. 
and I'm going to take a little bit more of that white paint and paint the inside of the frame that you'll be able to see and the outside of the frame only on the parts that you'll be able to see. So once that is done, this is how they've turned out. Like I said, most of the work is already done, but now the inside is painted and the outside sides are painted, the size that you will see. And now I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue to glue these window frames together. I'll repeat that same step for the next side. And now I am going to put some hot glue along one side of the joined window frames to put the whole window together. And the window is done just that simply. Now flipping it over, I want to reinforce the seams with some large craft sticks. So using hot glue, I'm just going to mount a few of them to the back seams. And then for the smaller areas, I'm going to use a couple of the smaller craft sticks to do the same thing. Now I will also have to use the craft sticks to give me an area to work with to glue this planter to the window. So using two large craft sticks, I'm going to glue them to that edge as you see me doing there. It gives me a clean edge. And then using more hot glue, I'm going to glue a large craft stick the other way, just like that. And that is going to give me a surface to glue the planter to the bottom of the window. And I want to use a lot of hot glue to make sure that the craft stick is secure in place. And it's going to give me a stable planter so that I can add florals to this without worrying about it. So there it is. And that's where I'm going to place it. And I am going to attach it with hot glue. And now I'm standing it up just to show you that it is attached. I even shake it a little bit just so you can see that um, that craft stick is going to hold up this planter. Now later on I did use some more um, tumbling blocks and craft sticks to help stabilize after I put the flowers in. So using some of this dry foam from Dollar Tree that comes in four blocks, I'm going to glue two whole pieces down and then a half, a half piece down 
to give me something for my flowers to stick in or stick to or go in. And of course, I'm using my favorite flowers from Dollar Tree, these fuzzy, furry greenery bouquets that I have a lot of, <laughs> so I'm putting them to use. And I'm pressing them all the way down into the floral foam. And that's what I have so far. Look how easy that was to make. Like I said, these are already distressed in the front you glue them together and it makes the easiest farmhouse window but i'm not done yet there's more that i want to do to this project i took one of these three dollar wreaths from target dollar spot and i added it to the top and i really like this wreath because it has the same fuzzy effect that the greeny root bouquets from Dollar Tree has, so I think it goes together so well. I found this fabric at Walmart. It was already pre-cut to one yard, and I loved it. It has little bumblebees on it, and the word bumblebee, and I thought it was so, such a sweet um, pattern and I really wanted to use it for this project. So I am going to cut a couple of panels. And this is a no sew project. I am going to use hot glue for the seams of these uh, curtain panels and it works out really well. So I'm just going to go around three of the edges, put a little hot glue, and then fold it up. You do want to be careful because the hot glue will seep through this cotton fabric. So be very careful with your hands and your fingers. So this is the back of the window frame. I've already done one curtain panel and I'm showing you the second one. You wanna put the finished end right there towards the bottom and the unfinished end towards the top. And I'm basically going to do what I did with the first curtain panel. I'm putting a dot of hot glue on the edge and then adhering it to the edge of the window frame. And as you can see, I have already hot glued some picture holders to the back. And I wanna get this even with the other curtain panel. So I'm gonna fold it back until it's even and then glue it in place. And then glue that to the window frame. So that's basically how it is held up. It's just with hot glue. So using this burlap ribbon, also from Dollar Tree, I want to create another tie back, as you see that I've done for the first curtain panel. And I'm just going to cut a strip of the burlap ribbon And I want to mimic the drape of the other curtain as much as possible. Of course, you can always, you know, fix it, move it around. And now I'm going to glue the burlap ribbon 
to the window frame and use a craft stick to smooth out that glue, spread it out, make sure that it is on there that it's going to hold. And that's what the window panels look like, the curtain panels. And I absolutely love it. I think it completely makes the look of this farmhouse window. It really creates such a sweet moment um, looking at this really pretty scene. And the color in the curtains also matches the antique white of the planter. And I did add a few succulents in there as well. What do you guys think about this? How do you think it turned out? Drop me a comment below and let me know if you preferred it plain or like this. Now because I had um, leftover fabric, I did want to make a cute little matching pillow to go on the ghost chair. So I'm using the same fabric and I'm, I just cut the fabric to the size of the pillow that I wanted, taking um, into consideration the hem of the, the fabric. And I wanted to tie in the burlap, so I'm going to put a strip of the burlap ribbon on the pillow. And I'm going to use some hot glue to adhere that burlap ribbon to the fabric. And I'm going to use a craft stick to smooth out that glue so it doesn't become clumpy. And now putting the right side of the other panel down, I am going to start to glue them together. So I'm using this polyfill that I picked up from Walmart to stuff this pillow and I am not going to stuff it super full. So I went ahead and sealed up half of the top and I left the other half open so I could turn the pillow inside out, make sure you get those corners, and also uh, to leave an opening for me to add the polyfill stuffing. And now using hot glue, I am going to glue together that final seam. Sorry, it's a little out of frame there. And there it is. I decided that it needed a little extra something. So 
I took some of the, I found some floral stickers, some burlap floral stickers from Walmart. And I decided to add those to this project to give it a shabby chic look. And if they look familiar, I initially used them on my Leaning Ladder project. I'll link that video below in the description box for you. But I thought it added the perfect touch to this pillow. Now, for this part of the project, you'll need two of these bamboo cutting boards from Dollar Tree and four of the tumbling blocks and I chose to use the darker um, blocks for this project and this is how I want to glue the cutting boards at that angle so I got my handy water bottle <laughs> to help hold up the um, cutting boards while I glued it I should have gotten a second cutting board so I could free up my other hand and it wouldn't move so much. My hand kept moving, so the board kept moving. I would put it between two sturdy solid objects and then just glue it down. Now I will tell you that because these are cutting boards and they're food safe, they do have a coating on them of something. So I would if I were to do this again, give it a light sand in the area that I plan to glue it. And then I would also use a combination of E6000 or wood glue along with the hot glue. So while the hot glue dries, I decide I want to uh, wrap the bottom of the legs in burlap. I'm sorry, not in burlap, in twine. I haven't had enough coffee today, guys. So I'm measuring how much I want to use on this first um, building block. And I'm gonna measure three more of the same length. And then using hot glue, I'm going to wrap the bottom half of the feet for this project. And this is going to be a little book rack it's not a magazine rack, it's not big enough. Of course, you could glue together more cutting boards to make it the size you'd like it to be. And I'm sorry I lost the footage of me gluing the, the feet to the project, but this is how it turned out. And I think it's super adorable. So these are all of our projects today. I hope you really enjoyed watching me put these together. I hope you were inspired to create something yourself. I really, really love how this farmhouse window turned out. This really adorable shabby chic matching pillow that is just perfect with the curtains of the window. And last but not least, our really quick and really easy bamboo book rack. I think that turned out really well. Anyway, I want to thank you all for joining me today. Thank you so much for subscribing to my growing channel. It is amazing to have you all here with me on my journey. Please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any more of my videos. Hit that notification bell so you'll know when I've uploaded a new video and drop me a comment below to let me know which way you like this window. Do you like it plain with just the planter and flowers? Do you like it with the flowers and the wreath? Or are you like me and you like it with the curtains, the wreath, and the planter? Drop me a comment and let me know. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate your time so much. I will see you in my next project. Until then, take care everyone. Bye.